people, a team of scientists in Western Australia have found a mysterious object unlike anything else seen in the universe. <laughs> That's the headline. And it's a great headline. But it's not aliens. In fact, it's a much better story than you could possibly imagine. Let me tell you about it today. We recently discovered a new source repeating much more slowly than a normal pulsar. We think that this could be a magnetar, a special kind of pulsar powered by the rearrangement of twisted magnetic fields. Alternatively, it could be an unusual white dwarf. These are left behind when less massive stars like our own sun reach the end of their lives. And of course, it could be something that we haven't even thought of yet. I jumped up and down with joy when I heard this story. Because it's such a parallel to this story. When Jocelyn Bell, a graduate student at Cambridge University, found this. A strange mechanically repeating signal coming from deep space. When Jocelyn Bell, who was a student at the time, told her professor, Cambridge University went into lockdown. One of the possibilities, and only one, was LGM. A regular repeating signal might imply an intelligent source. And this is where the story gets fantastic. It's one of my favorite bits of science. Poor Jocelyn, the woman who found the signal, was excluded from the Behind Doors conference at Cambridge University. The doyens of the science world, the suits. Her professor, head of Cambridge Astronomy Department, probably somebody from the government, discussed over three days without Jocelyn what it could be. And no doubt they had lots of possibilities. The irony of Jocelyn's exclusion from that top end meeting was that she went on to discover what it really was. While they debated what it could be, Jocelyn went back out to Lord's Bridge Cambridge Radio Astronomy Department, switched back on the telescope, and as the Earth rotates, remember the instrument she's using isn't steerable. You have to wait for the rotation of the Earth for the object to come into view. So that's exactly what she did, because she's smart. She realized that if there was another one, it wasn't LGM, Little Green Men. One unique source of pulsating energy might be anything, but the universe is big and forces of nature repeat. If it was a natural source, there's going to be more of them. And by finding two, and then eventually, after a few months, over a dozen, it was a natural object. It was a major discovery that earned a Nobel Prize for the professors running the Cambridge University Astronomy Department. But it was not awarded to Jocelyn Bell Burnell. And that, my lovely viewers, was how pulsars were discovered. The best description of what a pulsar is, is a lighthouse. Imagine a star that's collapsed, that's putting out a beam. The star's on all the time, but as the beam sweeps past you, your radio telescope, you detect it. Woof. And they have a regular rotation speed. Woof. Woof. Well, roughly like that, most of them. 
But the object that was discovered in Australia a few weeks ago is a bit different. Instead of just going woof past the telescope, the beam appears for a minute and then repeats every 18 minutes. It's extremely odd. It implies that the object is very powerful and rotating very slowly. But whatever it is, and we need to find another one to prove that it is a force of nature. The real story for me is the reversal of the sexist way it was found. The director of the Murchison Widefield Array is Natasha. Dr. Natasha Hurley Walker. Fantastic. And her graduate student who saw it first was Tyrone O'Doherty. Well done, Tyrone. Yeah. So Dr. Hurley Walker has answered some great questions about the object that her graduate student found using this array in Western Australia. Her first answer is to this brilliant question, and that is, where do we look? If we only look in a local area, we'll only find things that we expect to find. So astronomy needs to push boundaries and start looking in the dark, undiscovered areas of the universe. And that's exactly what she explains. Imagine that you've dropped your keys in a car park. You're scrabbling around looking for them. Conveniently, there's a street lamp and it's illuminating an area around about your car. So you're looking in that area, but no keys. The thing is, you could have dropped your keys anywhere in the car park on your way from the office. They could have been anywhere in the inky blackness. But you're not searching there because it's more difficult. So you're searching in the area where you expect to find them. And when you only search in the area that you're expecting to find things, that's the only kind of things that you'll find. So what I've done here is I've opened up a new parameter space. We're looking out into the inky blackness. We're putting new lights up. And we're searching for things that nobody expected. But what exactly in astronomy is a transient? A transient source is any object which isn't there as far as our telescopes allow us to see, and then it is. And then perhaps it's not there again. So it comes and it goes. So how does Dr. Natasha Walker actually feel about finding a new object in our universe? Well, it's tremendously exciting. To find an entirely new class of object, that's just incredible. So what's next for this amazing telescope in Western Australia? Might you find other pulsating sources? Right here, we're about to start building the low frequency component of the Square Kilometre Array. Now, this will be about a thousand times more sensitive than the MWA. We found one of these objects, and it happened to be the brightest and the closest. But that probably means there's an enormous population of more distant and fainter objects just like it. Instruments like the SKA will be able to find the full population and that will give us clues as to what is causing this incredible emission. So not everything in the sky is a signal from little green men. No, it takes dedicated research using some of the best instruments to broaden our horizons about the universe we all live in. So well done, the women of science. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.